Hi, Alistair. Congratulations on the win. First of all, did you, you started off with a bit of a, a slower output than perhaps we've seen you in the past. Is that because you knew he was going to be a tougher guy and you were going to have to break him down in the later rounds? Um, yeah, I kind of knew, you know, he's, uh, he's durable, can take a shot, take a punch. Um, so I kind, of, I kind of felt second or third round, eventually took five. But um, yeah, I kind of knew it would not be, it, I kind of knew it would not be first round. Once you got him on the ground, it became pretty clear right away that there was a difference in skill level there. Um, particularly, I think the first time you started raining down the elbows in round four, did you know that was where you were going to find the victory, was on the ground? No, well, I was actually uh, focused on maybe submission. But, uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of saw that the damage was kind of substantial with the ground and pound, so I was like, oh, well, it's working, let's just stick to this. When uh, you took him down in round five, did you know right away, oh, the finish is here, because he sort of just turtled up almost instantly? Um, yeah, yeah, I kind of felt, okay, he's, he's, he's kind of ready to go. Coaches were fantastic, also told me the same, get him down on the ground, you're going to get the finish. As soon as you win, right, everyone just wants to know what's next for you, but the heavyweight division is kind of, um, it's kind of set right now. I, the two fights people online are saying are a rematch with Rosenstrike, or perhaps seeing how Derek Lewis does against Curtis Blades later this year. I have to say, Derek Lewis was very vocal on Twitter about your performance tonight. He said he scored every round for Sakai, including the fourth. Um, do either of those two fights interest you? So, um, definitely. But, uh, yeah, Derek Lewis is just talking crap. <clears throat> My teammate uh, Curtis is going to destroy him, and uh, I'd be happy to kind of do that after Curtis. Curtis first. Cool. And, and the rematch with Rosen Strikes and the appeal to you? Because you were winning the majority of that fight first time round, and then the end was a little bit controversial with how the referee waved it off. Was, is that something you'd like to do again? Well, Rosen Strike, uh, I destroyed that man. I, I, I schooled him. It, in my opinion, it was a very bad uh, decision by the ref, waving it off with zero seconds left. I have no problem running that back. Um, in my mind, I already beat him. You know, it's only on paper that, that he kind of got it, and he knows it too. But uh, no problem running that back. So, but out of the two, it sounds like you'd, you'd prefer Lewis just for a new name and a new face? No preference. I'm, you know, what my preference is? Quality time with my girls. I've missed them. You know, camp is gruesome separated for eight weeks i kind of do that on purpose to get extra hungry extra motivated so for now i'm gonna fly back early tomorrow and spend some quality time with them and then we'll figure it out cool you mentioned motivation there um all this week everyone's been talking about your age how long you've been doing this how, how many eras you've sort of been through in your fights what is keeping <coughs> what is keeping you motivated why would you i understand that you love fighting but why at this point are you still getting to the gym every day, still training as hard. What, make, what makes you do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons, but uh, obviously I love the sport, right? I've dedicated my entire life to it, basically, training for 20, 29 years, competing for 23, first fight being in 1997. Um, love the game. I guess I'm good at it. Um, I don't like a 9 to 5. It's been a long time that I did 9 to 5, but uh, I just really love the game. And uh, there's also the time issue, right? I can still do it now. If I would take a break, or I'm going to, if I stop, it's going to be done. It's over. You can't come back after two years or three years. So, uh, no, I, I just really love the lifestyle. The guys in uh, Team Elevation are great. Uh, they motivate me, and I just love the game. Congratulations on the win. Speaking of seeing and fighting in so many places, it's got to be crazy fighting at the biggest arenas in the world. And then what's it like walking in here into the apex and absolutely <clears throat> no crowd, no fans, no anything? So it's different. Uh, but I'll tell you this. After I mean, my last fight was with no audience as well, but I'll tell you, it motivates me because it's something new, a new impulse. And uh, I don't know, I was actually very excited in the last uh, fight in Jacksonville. Very excited this time. It's something new. Uh, maybe after a couple of fights like this, I'll probably miss the crowd. <laughs> but um, no, it just motivates me extra. Something new, new impulse. Are you a, the type of fighter that typically is motivated by the crowd? Is there something, when you walk out, you've walked out plenty of times, but do you tend to embrace that moment, you know, as you've walked out? I, I think some people could probably be, oh, it's just an old shoe. He does this over and over. But is it still special to walk out there and... and take those fans in when you when you walk in the arena definitely special i like also walking out in different countries so i'm kind of missing that right because um, all the fans everywhere are a little bit different 
Japan and Korea, awesome. Uh, very curious about Fight Island, right? But now there's no, uh, no audience, obviously. But, uh, yeah. Um, before, when you, you, you flipped the phone around, who was that on the phone? And is that part of the big motivation for you when you go out here and fight? Definitely a big part of my motivation. That was my oldest daughter, Storm. She's uh, turning 14 in a month. So, yeah. Do they watch you fight? What do they think about she you watched, fighting? She watched the fight. I think they're a little bit nervous, right? Because anything can happen. You can get bloodied up. You get, I mean, it's exciting, right? But, um, yeah, it was a victory. So I think they're all happy. What was interesting hearing the, the commentary talk about, you know, world-class striker, you know, kickboxer, but how your game still evolves. You found time to make the adjustments in the fight to choose to, to do the ground and pound, which eventually got you the, the win. Talk a little bit about how you've seen your, your fight game improve and be able to adapt of taking in all this experience over the years. Well, um, I just keep learning and keep evolving, and that's, that's one of the things as a fighter you need to always do. And again, I'm very happy with the guys in the Denver Team Elevation, uh, you know, because they got a lot of new stuff, and I'm just soaking it up, and uh, great chemistry there. And I know uh, earlier you kind of made the face when John was starting to talk about the age. You know, you're like, don't, don't say 41's coming up. At the current pace of fighting about two a year, if you start to do the math, you know, say if there is talk of three more fights, maybe four more fights, you know, that starts pushing you towards 42 or so when it starts getting. Is it for you now the matter of when the end is? Is it just when, the, when you're feeling like fight's not fun, it's not an age, or is it, is it a number that you've kind of set for yourself? I've not, I've not decided it yet. We're gonna just see how it goes. Uh, I'm still loving it, I'm still improving. I still feel I can do it. Um, so yeah, we just need to see it case by case. And, and last one for me, I know a lot of people were talking about John Jones coming in and they're like, oh, would that be a great fight for you? But outside of just you two fighting, what, how well do you think Jones will do coming into the heavyweight division? Well, I've trained with him. Um, I know him as a person, he's a cool dude. Um, I think he's going to do good, right? He's a big guy. He's exactly my, my frame. Uh, he's probably putting on some weight now. So I think he's going to do good. You, you mentioned you're taking each fight as a case-by-case -case basis, but ha have you put a timeline of like when you see uh, how long you're going to be in the game? Probably one or two more years, maybe three. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, Dana mentioned earlier that you're making a run for the title. You want to get that title is uh, what do you see, when do you see yourself? When do you think you should be getting that opportunity? Well, if it was not for the Rosenstrack debacle, judging debacle, then I would already be there now. But um, I think I'll need another win. And then the shot there? Yeah, but it also depends on the other landscape, right? Um, but I'm, another win. You mentioned you love fighting all over the world. Uh, do you want to fight on Fight Island? Is that something that interests you to be in that COVID-free bubble? Definitely uh, looking forward to that. It's something new, right? I've, I've never fought in the Middle East. So that's something that I'm hungry for. I love new experiences. Um, you know, I hope COVID goes over soon. It would be great to fight in Korea or Japan. That would be on my list. It would be great to fight in Australia. Never fought there. It would be great to fight in my home country, Netherlands. So um, even Brazil would be awesome, but Corona needs to go first. What, talking about that, like a, a big part of your career was in Japan, and what, what would be the top three places that you'd want to uh, fight in before uh, hanging it up? Um, well, like I said, um, Japan, Korea, Brazil, Croatia, a lot of fans in Croatia, and then of course, Netherlands. All right, congratulations. Maybe even England, by the way. I was born in England, even though I'm Dutch. It would be nice to fight there too. Not Las Vegas? <laughs> Gazillion fights here. But it's a good, good spot, right? We beat Brock and we got some other crazy victories. Thank you.